Okay. Hi, everyone. So lovely to be here. Thank you. Um, so I've spent the last five years focusing on resolving my old stories and traumas, and in general, getting my life to a place where it means something that I'm proud of. It's been a great adventure. It's taken me around the world. I spent months in Peru drinking ayahuasca with the shamans, got to hang out with holy men in India. I got certified to be a kundalini yoga teacher. And I have pretty much immersed myself in every mindful pro uh, process and practice possible because as crazy as some of them sound, they really, really work. And I'm a filmmaker as well, so I've been documenting a lot of this process. Uh, the benefits I've gained have been massive. They've changed my life, and they're too much to describe in this short talk. But I have a show, so I hope to uh, you know, share it. You guys get to see one episode. Uh, so the one thing I've noticed is that you know, it's, it's a little bit raw and vulnerable to share these stories. It's, you know, it's self-conscious. A lot of the world seems to think we're sharing, you know, sharing your weakness is a vulnerability. It's, you know, it's not something we're proud to do, and I really want to help reframe that conversation. Uh, in the last couple weeks, I've had multiple friends come up to me, and we, you know, we start talking, and I haven't seen them in a long time. And the biggest thing everyone comes up with is like, ah, my life's not working. You know, I'm sick. I have physical ailments, my relationships don't work, work, all this stuff, whatever it is. Uh, and, you know, I always come down to, hey, have you ever really considered that maybe these symptoms, it's not working because you haven't processed the traumas of your childhood or, you know, or your adulthood or whatever. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I know. And I'm like, okay, so why not? And they're like, I don't want to look in the mirror. I'm not ready. And I kind of understand why when you figure, when you really like take a step back out and zoom at the system that's created for us, you know, up until recently, right now, you guys are all changing that, but, you know, so we have, <laughs> we have these systems that teach us the importance of personal hygiene and physical education, and yet we somehow have entirely avoided looking at emotional intelligence and emotional well-being. Uh, baffling. Um, somehow humanity has managed to progress this far without actually attending to our well-being. We have no emotional kindergarten that teaches people how to deal with their feelings. So when animals go through a traumatic experience, they literally shake it off. They tremble, they twitch until the experience has worked itself out of their system. And then they get back up and run around and go do animal things and everything's okay but we don't have that ability. We're not taught as children, we're taught as children to uh, don't cry, honey. You know, don't be sad, don't be angry. Don't behave that way. We're shamed for having our emotional experiences and taught to force on a big smile and act like everything's okay. And as adults, we do the same thing. I don't wanna feel like that. I'm just gonna, you know, push it back and go distract myself and pretend that nothing's happening or we try to rationalize our mind out of it, which ends up pretty neurotic, and I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, um, you know, these things, the problem then gets stuck. The experience, this emotional experience that we're not digesting gets stuck in our system and stored in our bodies, and until we sort it out, it haunts us, it sticks with us, and there's no escaping it. You really, you're gonna be with that, and it's gonna hold you back in life. Uh, so we live our lives dancing around these unpleasant experiences and these em unresolved emotional issues build up, build up, build up until they become problems. They're not normal, but they are normal. Because what human lives without witnessing births and deaths, divorce and heartbreak? Who here doesn't have one family member that doesn't struggle with depression, addiction, sickness? Who here hasn't personally gone through some traumatic incident or hardship? We are affected by the world around us, and if our loved ones suffer, we suffer too. Yet we're not taught how to process the suffering as a normal life affair. Instead, our current system dictates we have a problem and we need a specialized doctor to deal with us, who diagnoses us with a condition and then gives us pharmaceuticals to deal with the symptoms and not the problem. It's no wonder people are reluctant to look in the mirror. It's too much of a hassle, and it inadvertently labels us as a fuck-up. 
Human psychology dictates that we'd rather just avoid the mirror if we can. But the World, Trade, uh, the World Health Organization has depression listed as a leading cause of disability worldwide, affecting 300 million people. Something needs to give. This is not a sustainable model. And yet the rest of the world doesn't really get it, that it's not normal to struggle, that it's normal to struggle and normal to seek out solutions. Self-help, self-work, integration, personal growth, psychiatrists, therapists, all of these things are seen as begrudging hardships we have to go through because we're screwed up. Self-help isn't exactly seen as cool, but I heartily disagree. There was, there was emotional and physical abuse in my childhood, and as a result, I struggled with wildly debilitating anxiety. I was the weird shy kid that was hiding in the bathroom every day for an entire, I don't know, like a sixth, seventh grade, <laughs> because I couldn't be, I had no friends. And, you know, the, I had a most convincing belief system that told me something big and bad was wrong with me, and I didn't deserve good things in my life. And because of that, a, and, a sneaking, and a sneaking suspicion that this wasn't true, I got to go on this exciting journey into my psyche. And of every, every visit with a therapist, every ayahuasca ceremony, every kundalini yoga class, breath work, sound bath, journaling session, kirtan, etc., etc., has helped. And from the shy kid who couldn't get a sentence out, now I'm flying around the world shooting documentaries and talking at conferences, which is still kind of scary. Uh, so, the process is really the most interesting and rewarding thing and venture I could ever embark on, and now it's just a matter of getting the rest of the world to catch up with this. Uh, I, we really, really want them to, you know. If sure. People heal themselves, and they start healing the world around us, and we can, you know, fix some of these imbalances we're dealing with. Uh, so, here I am, hopefully convincing you to participate and help set the example. Please be open with others and share your, your stories of vulnerability and struggle. Share how your practices have helped you overcome the struggle. Let's reframe the conversation around emotional health and thus create more demand for solutions. Let's make healing cool. It's possible. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I started making movies about it. I started filming my own journey and just to share what it's like to go through these processes. I really want to destigmatize this. I want to demystify this. I, I, I still want to, I, I want to make sure that people are honoring it and creating the right container too. So, you know, as this stuff becomes le legal and people are like, oh, I heard this cures MDMA, let's do it in my garage. You know, it's like, you know, we have a, an example of ways to do it mindfully with someone who's experienced to, you know, set the container correctly. Um, so, I will share with you guys today an episode on Sulawaska, which is, well, the episode will explain it. Um, lastly, you know, I, I really, I, I go, I'm sorry, I should memorize this. <laughs> it's become my mission to shift the lens through which the public views self-help and personal growth and make all this work accessible to the masses. I want people to get excited about this inner journey as I am, so as to embark on it for themselves, so it's no longer a thing to be ashamed about so that access to these tools becomes something the public demands so we can change the legislation and everyone can start healing and we can get this world on track. All right, so take it away, Paul. Such a cute little dude. I was always told that magic mushrooms grows on cow shit, but these ladies are not living up to the hype. We found a mushroom, but it's not a magic one, but it's cute. In Holland, Psilocybin is mostly legal, and we're going to be working with Oliver Martin, a practitioner who guides people in a Sulawaska journey. This is a dung loving. This is. Sulawaska is psilocybin, also known as magic mushrooms, taken with Syrian rue, a seed from the Penganum harmala plant. The Syrian rue extends and intensifies the mushroom experience, making it four times more powerful and lasting up to nine hours. He says, I'm not gonna be the same after this. It smells okay. It doesn't <laughs> smell that gross. It's not too bad. <laughs> it's fine. <clears throat> Since the beginning of recorded history, people have been taking psychedelic plants to help them overcome mental hurdles. 
For me, I came to Oliver looking to conquer my overactive mind, an anxiety wrought problem that's been bothering me my entire life. I loop in my mind, I try to figure something out and then it doesn't work out. And then I try to figure out it again. And it's just like... In, in, in daily life? In yeah, the, while I'm trying to fall asleep. And I will not be able to turn it off. What mushrooms do, what a psychedelic in general does, is to enhance the senses to a point that they go beyond the daily uh, perception. We're walking here, yeah? And simultaneously, so many things are happening. And we have very good ears and very good eyes, and we can see everything and hear everything. Still, we can focus on talking together. And the mushrooms, they, they get all the stuff washed up, everything, all the energy is loose and, and, and gets to the surface again. And we can look at it and finally process it. This is the powdered mushroom material, two grams. Very powerful uh, subspecies. Yeah. <coughs> and remember, yeah, the other remains you have to drink. It smells like mushroom Maybe. soup. Cheers, guys. See you yeah. on the other side. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, below. Okay. You will soon see how strong they are. Okay, I'm curious. <laughs> and this is where things get interesting. Fluorescent colored waves and patterns took over and I felt about eight years old, shooting laser beams out of my hands while taking a tour of the universe. The patterns turned into a river which eventually landed me at the foot of a mountain. And I climbed this bright glowing mountain. The magnetic force was drawing me up. The higher I climbed, the more I realized that everything around me was composed of these energetic entities that were basically the building blocks of reality. And these are part of the force that drive everything. I found myself bathed in a light and came to realize that that light was God and that God is everything, including me. And that, of course, has some pretty big implications. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. Um, I feel like there is, it's like a video game land of like, but it's like the underlying building blocks of creation and you, and you see all these like little entities that are building everything together. I started, uh, being able to see how they operate. It, I kept on laughing because I see that it's all a big game. There is no good, there is no bad. We decide to give life meaning. We decide to say, oh, it's really hard, I'm gonna suffer. Or we decide to say, look at the awesomeness of mm -hmm. it. It's really just kind of what patterns we've ingrained in ourselves that determine which way we look. All, all things are growing, you know? It's like uh, when you water a plant, it's growing. And if you um, water your thoughts, yeah, yeah, you know, surrounding a problem, you know, not existing, thought pattern you don't like, right. yeah, which is pretty much it. If you feed it with energy, if you water it with energy, it grows. So funny because we put ourselves through so much mm. to forget that we are part of everything. Mm. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's not about healing stuff. It's about acknowledging the fact that you're already a perfect human being the way that you are. <sighs> and that, that there's, you know, the sun is out now, no, the, the last days. It was raining, you know, so that's the yin and yang of life, so everything is dark and light. While it may appear that Sulawaska could be a quick fix to any issue, I have to say it's really more of a ground-shaking moment of clarity that takes months and lots of self-work to unfold. But since then, I've got a better grip on my anxiety and an actual spiritual connection to the universe, which makes life a whole lot easier and, to be honest, pretty magical. Details on Oliver's work can be found below. I have one quick 30 second trailer. Um, this show is gonna release on Snoop Dogg's media company uh, in um, about um, beginning of August. So it'll be hopefully shared on newsletters and such, and maybe all over the internet, if I'm lucky.
Um, so here's a 30 second trailer for it. I was always told that when you alter the mind, you're playing a dangerous game. But times are changing, and research now shows that the drugs they said would kill us are actually proving to heal the mind. We venture into esoteric, occasionally illegal, and new exciting territory. I'm Marisa Sturtz, and these practices have changed my life. Join me as we dive into the psyche and explore the healing powers of weed, psychedelics, and other mindful practices. Did you say where did that take place? Where did you have those mushrooms? That was in Holland. Okay. We're trying to find places that are more or less legal. It's interesting because they're everywhere. The mushrooms? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but they're not legal everywhere. And also uh, a pr practitioner that's... This guy, Oliver Martin, has worked with him for over 10 years. He's extremely... Um, yeah, he knows what he's doing. Let's talk. No, I want to. Uh, that's, that's when we do the longer episodes. All right. Thank you, Marisa. Thank you.